uh, Noah and his family have just come off the ark, and God said unto Noah, this is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And so God had made a covenant with with Noah, right? And let, let, let's go back and let's read what happened, right? When he made this covenant, he said, and God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Now, I want you to watch this. And God said unto Noah. Now, remember, God is going to look down on the earth. He's going to see that it's corrupt. And he says, he comes down and he says to Noah. So God is personally going to speak to Noah. And he says, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So God's going to, he's telling Noah, I'm going to destroy the earth. So you know what I need you to do? He says, make thee an ark of goat for wood. So understand, God is going to destroy the world. He's already made up his mind. It's corrupt. He's going to destroy it. And Noah found grace in the sight of God. And so God's going to make this covenant with him. And he says, I need you to do something, Noah, because you're a human being. You're on the earth. Guess what? I want you to take your hands and I want you to build an ark. And if you build that ark and you go into it, right, and you take your family into it, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to save you. And that's what he says in Hebrews 11. He says, by faith, Noah, now look, look what it says, being what? Warned of God. Remember up there, God spoke to Noah. He, in other words, God warned Noah about what he was going to do, right? Yes. And he gave Noah, and here's the covenant. If you do it, I'll save you. If you don't do it, you're going to die in the flood just like everybody else. But guess what I'm going to do? I'm going, the world is corrupt. It's evil. I'm tired of it. I'm going to destroy it. So by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, because could Noah see the flood? No. When God warned him, matter of fact, most people believe that it had never rained on the earth. Right. And God's warning him, guess what? There's going to be a flood, and I'm going to destroy the whole world. And even though Noah could not see the flood, he believed God. And, and look what it says. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, you know what he did? He moved with fear. He prepared, he moved, he prepared. He didn't just sit there and not do anything, did he? No. Because if he had not done anything, if he didn't move with fear, and if he didn't prepare the ark, he would have died. His family would have died with him. Because God was going to destroy the what? He was going to destroy the world. So he says, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, he moved with fear, he prepared an ark to the saving of his what? House. And... Because he did that, he condemned the world and became the heir. In other words, an heir, remember what an heir is? It is a child who has a right to the inheritance. Yes. And so that's what you're going to see. God is going to, when he's going to destroy something, he is going to come down. He is going to communicate with man, right? What he's going to do. And then the man gets to, by faith, he's going to make a choice. He said, okay, I believe you, God. But it, but it's not just a matter of believing. Noah could have believed that God was, he could have believed every word God said, but not built the ark. What would have happened to him? He would have died. And so his faith without the works, right, would have been what? He would have died. Yes. So let me give you another example. So the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. So you remember the story, the God and the angels came down and they were talking to Abraham at his tent. Remember, Sarah heard him talking about her having a child in her old age. And so they so when they were when they're done eating and they're done with this conversation, these angels and here he calls them men rose up and they looked toward Sodom and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. So. Here's God walking with Abraham and these angels. 
And look what the Lord says to Abraham. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Now notice, the Lord came down. He's going to go destroy Sodom. And that guess what he's going to do? He's going to tell Abraham. Just like he told Noah, right? Noah, I'm going to destroy a flood, build an ark. He says, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? So he's using Abraham to save people. He's giving Abraham information, right, about what he's going to do. Now, now look what it says. And the Lord said, now I want you to look at this word, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great. So here he is, here he is talking to Abraham, and God has come down, and he said, because of the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether uh, whether they have done according altogether according to the cry of it. So here's God up in heaven. Look, I heard Sodom and Gomorrah, and I'm going to go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come up unto me. So someone in Sodom. cry, right? And he says, you know what, I'm going to go down. And he's going to know whether or not that cry is something that he should attend to. And he goes and he says, and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. So the men are walking towards Sodom and here's the Lord and here's Abraham. And Abraham drew near and said, will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? So when he's having this conversation, right, with God, he is appealing to God through, through, his, through God's word. Do you know that? Yes. Because it is not, it is not God's nature to destroy who? Me. The righteous with the wicked. <laughs> so <clears throat> what is Abraham doing? When, so this is a picture of prayer. Because when we pray to God, we are talking to God, are we not? And here is Abraham talking to God. And look what he says. Will thou destroy the righteous with the wicked? And then he goes on and says, Per adventure, there be 50 righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for 50 righteous that are therein? And look what he says. That be far from thee to do after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked. So God is allowing his own creation, this man that's made out of dirt, to reason with him. And he's saying, Lord, it, it's not you. You are not. You're, you're a good God. Will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? It's not after your manner to slay the righteous with the wicked. And that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Now look what he says to the Lord. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? You take that as an application when you ask God for something. Lord, my son, my daughter, my grandchildren, my best friend, right? They, they backslidden. They're living in the world. They're living in sin. Lord, open their eyes. You, you say in your word, Lord, when you're asking God, you appeal to him through his word. He says, Lord, it's not your will that any should what? Perish and that all should come to what? Appeal to God's loving nature. <laughs> appeal to him using his word. And that's what, that's what um, Abraham did. Now, God came down and he heard a cry coming out of Sodom, right? Someone was crying to God, and I'm going to tell you who I believe it was. And there came two angels to Sodom at evening, and who was sitting at the gate of Sodom? Lot. Lot. And how do I know that he was a righteous man? Well, Second Peter tells you he was a righteous man. Look what it says. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. 
And guess who he delivered? He delivered, what's that say? Just Lot, who was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that Lot, that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day. So what was Lot doing? Remember when him and Abraham, this was Abraham's nephew, and they broke off and Lot pitched his, tor uh, his tent towards Sodom, right? Yes. And so when Abraham was appealing to God, who do you think he had in mind? If, there ten, if there's 10 righteous, Lord, yes. who do you think he was appealing to? Because of Lot, right? Yes. But the reason that he had come down was also because of Lot. But here was Lot. He was sitting on the outside of the gate of the city. You know why? Because his this righteous man, his was his soul, his righteous soul was vexed from day to day with all their unlawful deeds. That's how I feel in this world. When you when you see all the evil in this world, and we're praying, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth, right? Yes. Now think about that. How many believers are praying for the Lord to come back? And, and, and now think about this also. Remember what we learned last week. The Lord wants to come back and set up his kingdom. But he needs us, right? Because we have authority. And so when we ask the Father, Lord, come back so your will can be done on earth, right? When we ask and we ask in the name of Christ, right? Because Christ is what? He is the mediator. He is a man, and and he and God needed a man to what? He needed a man so that he had authority on earth. He's got power in heaven. He can use that power on this earth as long as a man gives him what? The authority to use it. So when we ask the Father and we ask in Jesus' name, Jesus has a body. We learned last week that he said what? What did Christ tell him? I have all what? Power and authority in heaven and in earth. Yes. So, so, so listen, it's not a matter of if God's going to come back, if Jesus is going to come back and set up his kingdom and destroy the world. It's just a matter of when. Yes. All right. So, so these angels come in remember uh, lot invites them in he don't want them he knows how evil the city is he doesn't want them to sit, stay in the streets and he gets them in his house and look what it says and the men said unto lot has thou here any besides in other words do you have anybody else in this city do you have son-in-law and the sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou has in the city bring them out of this place for we will destroy this place. Now, why are we going to destroy this place? Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So, God's going to destroy it. He comes down, he hears our cries, and he comes down, and he sees the wickedness, and he warns us, and he gives us an opportunity not to be destroyed with the wicked. He warned Noah, did he not? It says Noah being warned of God of things not seen. So he allowed Noah to build the ark to save his family. And here he is with Lot. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to give him an opportunity, if he has any family in the city, to do what? To go out and warn them so they can be saved. Yes. It was the same with Rahab. Remember Rahab? Anybody that was in her house, bring if it, listen. You got that red ribbon or what, red, hanging out your window. Guess what? If there, if you're not in that house, then we're not responsible if you die. Right. But everybody in that house was saved, right? Yes. And so here it is. He's giving Lot. These angels are giving Lot opportunity to go out and to speak until any of his family members, so that they can, he can save them. And it says, and Lot went out. And he spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this place. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. 
Yes. So what I'm going to tell you is the Lord has done the same thing with us. Christ came down, sent his own son. He sees all the wickedness in this world. He said, you're living in the last days. He said, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. And he has given us time on this earth to go out and warn our friends and our family members. Do you know that? Yes. Yes, he has. Oh, hey, right, Lewis, how are you? All right, how are you doing, brother? Good. So, I want to take the truth that we learned last week, guys, and a truth that we weren't learned a couple months ago. And I want to, I kind of want to fit them all together so you understand the importance of prayer, okay? Now, he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, we talked about that last week in the sense that man has authority through Christ, right? to ask anything of God and receive it, right? That's what Christ did. Christ being a man and being God at the same time now has what? Power and authority on earth to do his will. But he is still waiting for us Christians to do what? To ask. We have not because what? Yes. We ask not. And so this is why he says that men ought to always to pray and not to faint. Do you care about your family? Do you care about your friends? Do you care about your coworker? And so he's going to give you this parable. He says, saying there was a, in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, avenge me, my adversary. Who's our adversary? The devil. Yep, he's like a roaring lion, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And you know what that, that unjust judge wouldn't do? He would not for a while avenge her. But afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this, this widow troubleth yep. me, yep. I will avenge her. Yep. Lest by her continual coming she weary me. Yep. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith. And that's what I'm going to tell y'all. Hear what God, this is because this is a parable and God wants you to understand something about prayer. That in the entire context is about what? That men ought to always pray and not what? Not. And then he gives you the example of the widow and she goes to this unjust judge and she asks for something and guess what he doesn't do? He doesn't give it to her. But eventually, because this widow keeps troubling him, lest by her continual coming she weary him, right? Right. And the Lord said, Hear what the judge is going to, the unjust judge saith. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which, look at that word, which cry day and night unto him? Why did this woman get what she asked for? Was it? Because he was a just judge? No. It was because what? Because of her continual prayer. Her continual prayer. She would not quit asking until she got what she wanted. She wanted. He says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? Now notice what he just did. He associated faith with people who ask God until they what? Get what they ask for. Get what they ask for. You know how you prove to God that you have faith? You ask for it until he answers the prayer or he absolutely says no. Right. Because the Lord said, the member of the Lord was in the garden. He said, Lord, if this be possible, take this cup from me. Yes. There's a point where God may say no, but he'll make it clear to you. And if he doesn't make it clear to you, guess what you should keep doing? Keep praying. Keep you keep praying. That is faith. See, this is, faith isn't some, this weird thing inside of you. Oh, I'm not getting what I want because I don't have this enough faith in me. 
Faith is keep asking, believing that what? He's going to give it to you. Yes. And one of the things you pray is for him to what? Come back in his will to be done where? In earth. How how can he do his will in earth right now unless we what? Pray. Unless mm-hmm. we pray. Mm-hmm. He We are limiting God by not asking. Yes. He says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, guess what? He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have have what? The petitions. See, you ask God once, he may answer it. He may not answer it. But if he doesn't answer it today, what should you do tomorrow? Ask him again. Ask him again, because he considers that faith. Matter of fact, the reason that the Lord is going to eventually come back is because there's not going to be that type of faith in the earth. Yes. Now, Psalms, the Psalm of David, he says, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt offerings, Selah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation. In the name of our God, we will set up our banners. Now look what he says. The Lord fulfill all thy what? Petitions. Petitions. Now know that I, that the Lord saveth his anointed, he will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen. We are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. You cannot expect anything in this world to to God to answer any of your prayers if you don't believe that he's going to answer them. Faith is asking until God gives it to you. He says, you have not because you ought. He says, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Do you believe that? Yes. You believe that, right? So so how do we get it? We ask through him, we have access to the Father. Jesus is our mediator, and if we will ask something and ask it in to ask the Father in his name, guess what? We'll receive it. And you know what the will of the Father is? Right here. If a person in this world perishes, you know it's not going to be God's fault. Right it's a good chance that it might be our fault. He says, even so, it is not of the will of your father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should what? Should perish. He says, the Lord is not slacking concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. (coughs) But he's long-suffering to us, not willing that what? He is not willing that any should perish. Do you know that it's God's will that nobody perish? Yes. So why do people perish? You know why a lot of people are going to perish? Because you have the ability to ask God to do things in their life, to put things in their life, to open up their eyes, and you're not asking. Now, look what he says, not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. He says, but the day of the Lord may come. Will come. It's going to come. It will come. Just like it came, the Lord came down in the days of Noah and he talked to Noah and he told him, you know what, I'm going to destroy the world. Here's what I need you to do. He came, he, they came to, the, to, to Rahab and said, hey, listen, we're going to destroy the city. This is what you need to do if you want to save you and your family. Oh, you know what? Hey, Lot, you know what you need to do? I'm going to go ahead and go warn your family get, to get out, right? There was actually a time that God sent Jonah to where? Nineveh. 
and they listened. For adventure. <laughs> yeah, for adventure. They, my point is, God has done something to Lewis and to John and to Carlos and to Patricia and to Love and to Ron and to me. You know what he's done? He's let us know that he's coming back and he doesn't want people to perish, right? right. And he wants us to warn them that he's coming back. Yes. And he's also given us access to the Father, right? The power of God. We have the power of God, then we can use it if we'll just what? Ask. Mm -hmm. Just ask one time. No, ask until he what? Remember what? Remember, he says, hear what the unjust judge saith. I didn't give her that because I, I wanted to. I gave it to her because she wouldn't leave me alone. Right. Her continual coming. She just wouldn't quit. So I finally gave it to her. And that's what we're going to see in the scripture. And I'm going to give you a couple, I'm going to give you a, a, a few verses. I'm going to prove it to you. This is how God works. So Matt, uh, Mark 10, he says, and they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. So here's a blind man, right? And when he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to, what's that word? Cry out. Cry out and say. So he's, he's opening his mouth. He's crying to God and saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And you know what everybody was telling him? And many, be quiet. And then he charged him that he should what? Hold his peace. But you know what he did? He cried the what? The more. I mean, he cried out. Jesus didn't hear him. People telling him to be quiet, but he kept crying. He says, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He cried it again. And then Jesus stood still. Jesus didn't hear him the first time, did he? Or he acted like he didn't. But because he kept on asking and crying to the Lord, guess what he did? He stood still and he commanded him to be called. So he calls him over. And he, ca uh, he cast up away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what will that I should do unto you or to thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, go thy way. Now look what he says. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Now what does he mean by that? Does he mean that he could sit, he could have sat over there and prayed within himself and his faith was going to heal him? Or, or is he saying that faith is the fact that when he cried and people telling him to be quiet and the Lord didn't hear him the first time, what did he do? He cried it, he cried the more. He said, Okay, Lord, you didn't hear me the first time, I'm going to do it again. And if he didn't hear it that time, guess what he was going to do? He's going to do it again. He's going to keep on crying until the Lord was going to give him what he asked for. Yes. Look at Matthew 20. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside. When they heard that Jesus passed by, look what it says, they cried out. You know, the Lord hears the cries of his saints. Yes. They cried out saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them because they should, they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I should do unto you? They said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be open. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. Do you see what faith is? Faith is not asking one time. Faith in like this little, little prayer you say within yourself, and if I don't get it, I must not have enough faith. Faith is asking God until he gives it to you. Yes. That's what true faith is. Hear what the unjust judge saith by her continual what? Coming to me and wearying me. That's why I gave her what she wanted. 
God wants to see if you have that type of faith. And he says at the end of the world, shall he find that faith on earth? He's not going to find very many people at the end of the world when he comes back to destroy it that are doing what? Crying out. That are crying out, asking him for things. Let me give you another example. And this is a good one here. Because when Jesus came, he came to the house of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. He came into his own, his own received him not, right? So, so he was coming for Israel. And, and this woman here, it says, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Now look what it says. But he answered her not a word. He acted like, Jesus acted like he did not even hear her, right? Mm -hmm. So did she give up? No. But you know, even his own disciples came and besought him saying, send her away for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. She wasn't an Israelite. Right. So first he ignores her. And then he's, she's like, help me, Lord. And he's like, nope, I can't do it. You're not, you're not, uh, you're a dog. You're not of the house of Israel. And you know what she said? She said, true, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. She wasn't going to give up until what? Until she got what she wanted. And look what how, look how Jesus answers her. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy what? Faith. Why? Why was it so great? Because she kept it. She believed. Well, him. what if when the Lord had said something to her, she just he just ignored her and she went away? Would she have got her prayer answered? Nope. Nope. She wouldn't have got it answered. Because she wouldn't give up, she got her prayer answered. Right. That is what the Bible calls great faith. And when he was come into his own country, so Jesus goes down into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And now look what he says. And he did not many mighty works there because of their what? Unbelief. They're unbelief. What does that mean? Well, if faith means you're going to ask God for it, what does unbelief mean? It means you don't ask. They're not asking. He couldn't do the works because they weren't the, of the unbelief. You have you have not because you ought. Ask not. If they had just come, the only reason they he could not do works there was they did not have faith. And by faith, I mean, they would not come to him and ask him. You want to know why you don't get healed from certain things? You want to know why you don't get certain prayers answered? It's easy. You don't ask. And you don't believe because if you really believe that if you have his, if you have your petitions already before God, sometimes God can't, doesn't answer prayers immediately. Sometimes it just takes a while to get there. Remember Daniel? Daniel was praying and fasting, and it took 21 days because there was spiritual warfare going on. Yes. God wants to answer your prayers. Mm -hmm. He wants to see your faith. Do you believe that I will really answer your prayer? Now, having said that, Go back to last week. God has God has power in heaven, and he cannot use that power in earth, right? Except that men give him the what? 
the authority to use it. And we do that by asking, and we ask in whose name? Jesus. We ask in his name, what's it say right here? Um, that for through him, we both have access by one spirit unto who? The Father. We have power, we have access to the power of the Father through him. He is the mediator. So if we need anything done on earth, all we have to do is ask the Father in Jesus' name, and guess what? He'll give it to us. He'll give it to us. So what would be, what if you were the devil, what would you do? You would want one of two things to happen, because you don't need both. You would either want believers not to believe in the power of God, or you would want believers what? To believe they don't have the authority to ask for it. You don't need, you, he doesn't need you. And that's exactly what he's done in this world. Do you know that? Look what he says. In whom the God of this world have what? Blind, uh, of them which believe not. Why did these people here not get their answers, their prayers answered? Why did that? Because they didn't believe. They didn't go ask him. And that's what they're thinking. That's what the, that's what the devil wants you to do is to believe. It's, 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 a, it's a waste of time asking God. Or even if I do ask, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> or, or God doesn't have the power on earth to do these things anymore. He's taken away. He's taken away miracles. He doesn't heal the sick. He doesn't raise the dead. He doesn't do any of these things anymore. Well, the only reason he doesn't do them anymore is, guess what? We don't ask. We don't ask. That's why he. That's why the scripture says. The God of this world have what? He's yeah. blinded our minds to these truths. No, no, look. Uh, this is the story. This is the story of Paul um, or Saul when he gets converted. Now, look, look what it says. It says, whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Why, why would Jesus say that he was persecuting him? Because, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, he's persecuting the church. He's called, yeah, that's his body. He's the head, we're the body, right? Right, right. He says, it's hard for thee to kick it. God's trying. He said, I'm going away, right? It's needful that I go. It's expedient that I go away because I'll have, listen, I'll have, I have all these temples all around the world, right? Where I can do God's will. Yes. My entire body. On the east, north, west, south the, of the whole world, I'll be, I'll have the ability to accomplish the Father's will on earth. And right now, I'm just in one body. Yes. And so here he is. What's he doing to the Lord's body? He's having them thrown in prison. He's having them killed. And so he says, who are you, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus, whom you persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Okay? So, God, Jesus had a purpose for Paul. And I'm going to tell you, it's the same purpose he's given it to me and you. He says, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee. Here's, here's our purpose. Here's our purpose. Because remember, the God, okay, so remember that the God of this world has what? Blinded our minds, right? Yes. And here's our purpose. To open their what? Eyes. And to turn them from what? Darkness. Darkness to light. And from the power of Satan unto what? God. How can you turn, open people's eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to the power of God? By showing them they have access to the what? Power of God. Through what? Prayer, through asking. 
the the devil wants believers to be in darkness. He wants them to think that, that, that God doesn't do miracles on this world no more. He wants he, he wants them to believe that they don't have access to that power in God, that or they don't have the authority to ask God. And it's our job, it's our purpose to do what? To show them that they do. God can accomplish a lot of great things in this world if we'll just ask. If his body, if we'll open the eyes of believers and let them know, you know what? If you will pray and you will ask and you will, you'll pray in faith and you won't quit until God gives you what you ask for. He says, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. Look what it says. For this purpose. The Son of God was manifested. This is the purpose. This is why. This was Paul's purpose. Jesus was manifested that he might what? Destroy the works of the devil. <clears throat> the devil has blinded the eyes of men. You know what he told Adam and Eve? He says, the day, or told Eve, he said, the day you eat, your eyes shall be what? Open. But, but but here's the problem. Everything that comes out of the devil's mouth is a what? Lie. He's blinded our eyes. He's blinded our minds. We're in darkness. We need to understand that, listen, God, we, we're trying to do things by our own power. When we have access to God, the Father, and his power, Timothy says, I exhort therefore that, look what he says. First of all, look at that with those words. So Timothy says, I exhort therefore that, first of all, look what he says, this is the most important thing. Supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for who? All men. All men. It is God is not willing that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He says, for kings, we're, we're to make supplications and prayers and intercessions for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be what? Saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Yes. That, that's God's will. It's not God's, the, it's not God's will that, but, but God needs men to give him what? Authority on earth to do these things. <clears throat> he says there is one God and one what? Mediator. Mediator between God and men. And look what he says. He doesn't call him Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. He calls him the what? Amen. Because men have what on earth? They have authority. And Jesus Christ is a man. And he is on the right hand of the Father. He is the mediator. And he has all power and all authority in heaven and in earth, right? And so when you ask anything of the Father in his name, guess what? It'll be done to you. Yes. He says, there's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself for all to be testified in due time, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and without what? Doubting. Don't doubt. Just keep asking. That's faith. He says the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. How can you oppose yourself? If you don't understand, if you don't understand this truth, 
you're in opposition to your own soul. Do you know that? Yes. If God peradventure will give them what? Look, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them what? He, God can give them something. He can give them what? Repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And that they may recover themselves out of the what? Yeah, the, the snare of the devil. Do you know when you don't understand this, you're caught in a trap? If you don't believe that your prayer means anything, if you don't believe that there is power from God to, to accomplish things, you know that, that you're in the snare of the devil? Yes. And, and listen, I was backslidden one time, and I was in the snare of the devil. You know how I got out of the snare of the devil? People prayed for you. People prayed for me. Do you know that? Yes. They prayed for me. I was backslidden for 10 years in wicked sin. And they prayed for me. And you know what happened? I got, I recovered myself out of the snare of the devil. Not only did I recover myself out of the snare of the devil, I realized something that guess what? My, the God of this world had blinded my mind. Mm -hmm. There is nothing in this world that God cannot, the father cannot, he says with God, how many things are possible? All things. All things are possible, but he needs you to do what? Ask. Yeah. He needs the prayer of faith. And what is the prayer of faith? The prayer of faith is asking God until he actually what? Gives us what we ask for. When he said, you know, when you pray thy kingdom come, do you know eventually it'll be just like Lot when he was praying and asking God to help him? Yes. That eventually God's going to get tired of it and he's going to come down here. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to see that the world is just so wicked and he can't find but a few righteous people. You know what he's going to do at the last trump? He's going to call them out. Yes. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to turn on this world and destroy it. Yes. So I'm going to give you this last example here, and, and we'll close. He says, Moses said, you know, I will turn aside and see this great, great sight, because he saw this bush burning, right? He says, why the bush is not burnt? And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God did what? Called him. Called to him. Just like he called to Noah, just call, like he called to Abraham, just like he called to Lot, uh, to Lot right? Yes. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seeing the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. Now, we talked about this last week. The, Egypt is a picture of this world that we're living in right now, right? Yes. He says, I have seen their affliction, and I have heard their, what's that word? Cry. I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. He hears the cry of Lot from Sodom, right? Yes. He hears our cries. I've heard the cry of my children, right? Yes. Pharaoh is down there and he has got them in this sore bondage. And you know what? I know their sorrows and look what, look what God says. I am what? Come down. To deliver them. deliver them. I'm coming down. I came down to see if, you know, that cry I heard from Sodom, whether it was true or not, and it is true. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to deliver if there's any righteous people in there, I'm going to deliver them out. I'm going to deliver Noah and his family. I'm going to deliver Rahab and her family. I'm going to deliver um, Lot and his family. Well, he says the same thing about his people here. I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, but that's not all I'm going to do. I'm not just going to save them by the blood of the lamb. You know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to bring them up out of this land until a what? 
good land. A good land, an inheritance. Do you want your inheritance? Because the Bible says your inheritance is a reward. Yes. You can lose it. Esau lost his inheritance. All those people that came out of Egypt didn't get the inheritance. A lot of them died in the wilderness because they were sinning. Yes. God, God has come down in the sense that he has brought his spirit down here. And he dwells in Lewis, he dwells in Carlos, he dwells in Patricia, he dwells in Ron, he dwells in John, he dwells in love, he dwells in me. And you know what he's done? He said, you know what? I hear you cry, and I'm getting tired of this world, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to destroy it. You know what? Hey, Lot, do you have any family members here? Because if you do, you better bring them out. Doesn't mean they're going to listen to you. But we sure can ask God day and night. And, and, and per adventure, God give them what? Repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Yes. Sometimes we get so caught up in this world, we think our job and our life and, 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 and all these things that are important that are not really that important. Your soul is important. God cares about your soul. He cares about your, he cares about everyone's soul. He says, at Micah, he says, hear all ye people, hearken, O earth. In other words, I want everybody in the earth to listen to what I got to say and let the Lord God be witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. Now look what he says. This is talking about the second coming. For behold, the Lord cometh forth out of his place and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth and the mountains shall be molten under him and the valleys shall be cleft as wax before the fire and as the waters that are poured down a steep place. He's coming back. He's coming down. And you know what he's looking for? He's looking for Lot. He's looking for you. Is there any righteous people in this world and I can pull them out before I destroy it? And there's a lot of Christians that are not what? Not righteous. Right. They're living in sin. It's our job to do exactly what Lot did. To go and say, listen, this world's not going to last forever. The Lord's coming back. Remember, y'all remember what um, in the book of Jude, in the epistle of Jude, what Enoch, it said, and Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these saying, what? The Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute upon judgment upon all and to convince all of all their ungodly deeds, which they've ungodly committed, right? He was before the, the before God destroyed the world with a flood in Noah's days, because Enoch was his great grandfather. Noah's great grandfather. He was warning people of the second coming of Christ. Amen. How much more should we be warning people? that the Lord is coming out of his place and he's coming down. And in Isaiah, we'll close, he says, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. In other words, Noah, go get in the ark. Lot, get out of Sodom. Rahab, make sure you're in your house. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to do what? Punish the inhabitants of earth. To punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. He's coming back. He wants everybody to repent. He wants us to understand. Listen, your eyes are not blind no more. Satan has blinded your eyes. Listen, if you haven't learned anything in the past two weeks, you've learned this, that God, the Father, has power to do things on earth. And all he's doing is waiting for his son to give to ask. Right. And his son only asks if you what? If you, if you ask. ask. Yes. Because he's the mediator. He's between you, us, and the Father. And the Father will do anything. I promise you, the Father will do anything his son asks him. Yes. So if you'll ask Jesus, you'll ask the Father and ask it in Jesus' name, guess what he'll do? Give it to you. He'll do what he'll do it. Yes. 
It, if he doesn't do it, God's a liar. Yes. And we know that God is what? Right. Is it possible that God can lie? Yeah. All right. Anybody have any questions or comments?